Getting paid to do what you love is great, and when you hit the big time in Hollywood, the pay is good. Sometimes it's so good that actors have been willing to take on a role just because they know what they stand to get out of it. <laughs> Here are 10 actors who took on roles in films just for the money. But wait, before we get started, make sure to click that subscribe button for more great videos on our playlist. And we've got a quick game for you. Can you guess the film from these emojis? Stay tuned until the end of the video to find out. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Alec Guinness, Star Wars. Alec Guinness is probably the ultimate example of an actor taking on a role just for the money. Guinness had a profit-sharing deal on the film, so it made sense he'd take the role. He stood to make some serious cash off the film, and did, but that did not mean he enjoyed much of his time spent playing Obi-Wan Kenobi. In fact, he seemed to hate pretty much all of it. Guinness was keen to voice his complaints on set. He was especially irked by Kenobi's confusing dialogue and his lack of clear motivations. It's an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us, and penetrates us, it binds the galaxy together. He was even more scathing when writing about the experience in his diary. He had a particular focus on that dialogue which he really did not like, saying the script was constantly undergoing changes. But he didn't feel like the script ever actually improved, and it didn't make his character any clearer or more likable. He even went as far as to say that it wasn't even a real acting job, and that the only thing he didn't regret about the experience was the money. Yikes, still we're glad he took the role. We can't imagine anyone else in his place. <laughs> Jackie Chan, Rush Hour. The 90s enjoyed a good buddy cop film that featured bewildering pair-ups. Luckily, Rush Hour had us covered on that front. Starring Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker as a mismatched pair, the film was met with some pretty good success and spawned two sequels. As it starred Chan, we can only imagine that the stunt team were glad for a few days off. After breaking into Hollywood in the late 80s, Jackie Chan was everywhere in the 90s, but for numerous reasons, he never really enjoyed his Hollywood career. He appeared in all three Rush Hour films despite only doing it for the money. Because the only thing better than one enormous paycheck is, well, it's, it's three. It's three enormous paychecks. For those of you who love ad-free viewing and free things, we're excited to announce the Premium Network. The Premium gets you early access to videos from Screen Rant, CBR, The Gamer, and many other great channels. Literally thousands of videos in one place with ad-free browsing. How sweet is that? Sign up for free at The Premium by clicking the link to start binge-watching videos from your favorite channels. Morgan Freeman, London Has Fallen Morgan Freeman is one of the biggest stars on the planet. He's got over 100 films under his belt, including arguably some of the best films ever made. He's also played God a couple of times. You can't get much better than God. It's the ultimate role. That being said, sometimes he takes a role just for the paycheck. And with a career like his, he deserves to do it every now and then. And that was the case with London Has Fallen. Having already starred in Olympus Has Fallen, Freeman returned to the sequel playing the Vice President of the United States, but he readily admits that he mainly took the role for the pay. He said that large production films like that pay well, and also come with the advantage that people will go to see it. But it's also because he never really knows when the next role will come calling. It's a case of doing as much and making as much as he can, while he can. That being said, he's Morgan Freeman, so we don't think he has too much to worry about on that front. Robert Pattinson, Twilight the Twilight Saga is known for dividing film fans, but nobody on this planet holds the same level of contempt as Robert Pattinson does. Pattinson played Edward Cullen in all five films and hated basically every minute of it. In fact, there hasn't been a single interview about the franchise where he hasn't taken the opportunity to bounce some pretty scathing words at it. He's especially full of hate for Edward Cullen, the sparkling vampire heartthrob who thousands of teenage girls fell in love with. He mocked the character for being a century-old virgin and compared him to a serial killer. He also claimed that the secrets behind playing him were to look a combination of constipated and stone, and like someone full of self-loathing, because that loathing is what he took away from reading the books. He also points out that there is something very wrong with Edward, Bella, and their relationship, which is not the best thing to take away from a romance story. So why take a role you hate so much? Money. Twilight was a global sensation, so he may have publicly hated it, but he got rich. Gentlemen. Your complete attention, if you please. Orson Welles, The Transformers, The Movie. 
Before Michael Bay got his hands on the Transformers, there was the animated film in the 80s. It didn't do well in cinemas, but has become a cult film legend and a crucial piece of childhood nostalgia. It also starred movie legend Orson Welles in what would be his final role. By the time he was in Transformers, he was 70 years old and in poor health. He died of a heart attack just five days after he wrapped up recording for his part. Being so ill, his voice had to be synthetically enhanced in order to give it that Welsian sound that he's so well known for. I am Unicron. In the final years of his life, he took many roles which were smaller than the large-scale masterpieces he was famed for, including a few commercials, just to make ends meet. And that was one of the reasons he took on Transformers. Wells wasn't overly thrilled with the part. He gave his voice to Unicron, the gigantic bad guy who can also transform into a planet. In an interview with his biographer, he said that he was playing the part of a terrible robot toy from Japan which could change into something else. Oh, what monster could have done? Betsy Palmer, Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th is one of the most famous horror franchises ever, spawning a collection of offshoots including crossovers, reboots, and video games. Despite the popularity of masked killer Jason Voorhees, the first film threw in a curveball at the end. All along, it was Mrs. Voorhees who was slashing her way through the film, getting revenge for her son's death. Jason didn't even get a look in until the sequel. Prior to getting the role as Mrs. Voorhees, Betsy Palmer had already had a career on both the big and small screen dating back three decades. But even with all that under her belt, she wasn't too keen on the idea of being in a horror film. And she almost passed up the role. But when her agent called about her role, she had been looking at a new car she wanted to buy. So thinking of the money and the car, she relented and had him send the script over. She wasn't too fond of the script, but the role only required 10 days of work. And we guess 10 days in a horror film didn't seem like too bad of a price for a brand Brand new car. Stephen Delane, Game of Thrones. When Stephen Delane joined the cast of Game of Thrones, he had a 30-year acting career under his belt already. His role as Stannis Baratheon on the show is probably his best known. As much as people love to hate the character, and for good reason, Delane's performance was well received by critics and fans alike, making him a fan favorite. But despite the big part he played over the course of the show, Delane doesn't seem to be too attached to the role. Whilst he enjoyed his time on set, he never found himself able to watch it after his time on Game of Thrones finished, claiming it to be a tough watch for him because it can get pretty brutal at times. Do you believe him? Well, I don't know that I believe anyone's 100% a dick, man. I mean, do you believe that he's here to help? Glenn Close, Guardians of the Galaxy. Glenn Close, best known for her role in Fatal Attraction, took on a fairly small role in Guardians of the Galaxy playing Nova Prime, who was later revealed to be Irani Rail. She was keen to work with Disney again because her terrifyingly good portrayal of Cruella DeVille wasn't quite enough. Anita, darling. And she was keen to be a part of the new generation of Marvel superhero movies because it was something she hadn't done before. Close has always had a pretty diverse career and loves what she does. She has been in a mix of big budget blockbusters as well as a number of much smaller independent films. As the years have gone on, these have been where she has focused her career. While she still appears in bigger roles, she has said herself that a lot of the incentive in these roles is the money. They pay her more and it allows her to keep making the smaller films that she loves to do. It's not often you see performers that in love with the art of filmmaking. Everything's perfectly all right now. We're fine. We're all fine here now. Thank you. How are you? Harrison Ford, Star Wars The Force Awakens. Harrison Ford is a big deal in Hollywood, and his career is mostly defined by three iconic roles. Rick Deckard, Indiana Jones, and everyone's favorite rogue, Han Solo. As it happens though, he wasn't everyone's favorite. By the time Star Wars had wrapped, Ford was doing all he could to separate himself from the character which had gained him international recognition. By the time The Force Awakens came around, people were worried that Ford wouldn't even want to come back to the series, but luckily, he did. If Ford had got his way, it could have been a very very different story. He had initially wanted Solo killed off at the end of Return of the Jedi, believing that if he sacrificed himself for his friends, it would have made Solo a hero and solidified his character arc. But before The Force Awakens was released, he admitted that he was wrong, probably because of the monumental impact Solo had on the film's story. We imagine that after such a long holiday from Solo that he warmed up to him again. It also probably helped that The Force Awakens made Ford the highest earning film star of all time. The Force is definitely with him. Henry Cavill, DC Extended Universe. It shouldn't surprise anyone that Superman star Henry Cavill is making some serious dollars. In fact, he's 
quite vocal about it. He admitted that he's not just doing it for the art. He makes a huge amount of money, which he enjoys and deems pretty important. And we guess he's right. Like the saying goes, money makes the world go round. Just like Superman's flying can. Okay, we may have embellished that part a little bit. Cavill was a little wary about admitting that he enjoys the money side of things because it's still frowned upon a bit to say that you like money, especially as an actor. But he also admits that he uses the money for things that he enjoys. And he likes the fact that it enables him to do these things. He mainly likes to use it to treat his friends. He's especially glad for the money when he has to go jet setting around the world for filming or promoting a movie. The long journeys from his home in London to America and everywhere else in the world are made a little easier when you can afford first class. That's all we've got time for today. Can you think of any that we missed? Let us know in the comment section below. And remember to like, share, and subscribe for more great content. And remember the emoji quiz at the start of the video? The answer is, did you get it right? Let us know. Thanks for watching.